how did all these people for this whole Pleistocene essentially survive? On the one hand, by not investing in the environment, by only harvesting what comes out of the environment, by following a multi-resource strategy, and if things didn't work out in one place anymore, simply moving somewhere else, so adapting to change in a spatial way, and I'll get back to that later on, because one of our problems is that we can't do that anymore. And also by systematically staying below the environment's carrying capacity. One of the interesting data that we have from Australia is that the only place in Australia where people systematically have famines in prehistory is in the lush forests of the Murray and Darling Rivers. Because there, people were lured into the idea that they could actually have more and more people, and then they get tapped on by uh, famines. In the very sparse areas of Australia, you never have any famine, any trace of famine. We find famines in the bones, and that is why I can talk about that. The other thing is that people did not know how to interact with the environment. They only reacted to it. So the environment was essentially left alone. Change and risk were imminent all the time, every minute of the day. But because they were, there was no accumulation of risks, and I'll get back to that later on. People did, to some extent, choose locations where they minimized change. For example, and this is something that applies to this region where you're living, but we find in Greece that prehistoric people at the end of the Paleolithic choose the tectonically very active areas and why do they choose them? Because those are the areas where nature itself puts itself regu regularly back to stage zero, where there is no long-term change because that is interrupted all the time by the tectonics. 